backpacking channels love loadouts. But a lot of those loadouts only talk about your base weight. That is everything except for food, fuel, and water. And I understand why, because every backpacking trip is different. Different locations, different length of time, different conditions to deal with. If I'm going on a weekend trip and you're through hiking the PCT, we're probably going to need drastically different quantities of food, fuel, and water. But everyone needs a shelter and a sleep system. Everyone needs a backpack and a way to prepare food, which makes base weight a lot easier to compare. But what if you want to know more? You want to see not just my base gear that I'm carrying, but everything, food, fuel, and water too, what I actually take on a backpacking trip. Well, that's what I'm talking about today. I'm Steven from My Life Outdoors, and this is everything that I'm taking on my next trip, including food, fuel, and water, all for under 23 pounds. Now, a pretty typical trip for most backpackers is a weekend trip, two nights and three days, and that's the length of time that I'm planning for my next trip. It was supposed to be to the Grand Canyon, but I got sick and I had to miss my permit date, so I've rescheduled a different trip somewhere in the middle on March somewhere in the southwest. I haven't fully decided where yet, but I'm planning for highs in the 60s and lows in the 30s, which would be pretty similar temps to what you might see in a high alpine area even in the summertime. So all in all, I think this loadout, while somewhat specialized, is fairly versatile for a lot of different destinations. And to keep this from getting too long, I'm going to try to only speak briefly about each item. Starting with the big three, I'm taking my Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 3400, mainly because it's lightweight, but it's also specifically designed for the rugged canyons of the Southwest, hence the name. I'm pairing that with my brand new Z-Pax Plex Solo, mainly because I just can't pass up the weight savings it gives me. This is the lightest fully enclosed tent available on the market today at 13.7 ounces. But I realize this is somewhat of a specialized tent, so if you want to take something just a little bit different, but still very similar, the Six Moon Designs Lunar solo. This is a very similar tent. It weighs only a little bit more, but it costs about half the price. And with it, I'm going to bring some MSR Groundhog Steaks. I recently picked these up because I'm expecting some pretty hard ground, and this being a non-freestanding tent, I wanted to make sure that I could get some steaks in the ground. And to my knowledge, these are the best tent steaks on the market. Inside, I'm trying to increase my sleep comfort, so I recently picked up this Big Agnes Q-Core SLX sleeping pad. That is 3.5 inches thick, but it's 4 4.5 inches thick on the outside to keep you from rolling off the edge and it's 25 inches wide and I'm really hoping that this is going to substantially increase my sleep comfort. And I should note that I bought this sleeping pad from Sports Basement which is this week's sponsor. Now the last time the Sports Basement sponsored a video I accidentally said that they will take back anything anytime in any condition but only for a prorated refund. But I was wrong. They don't pre-rate their refunds. They will give you a full refund anytime which is something that I really appreciate in a retailer because backpacking gear is expensive and you never know if it's going to work out. So, for instance, if I decided that this air mattress is uncomfortable for whatever reason, I can send it back and I can get something different until I'm satisfied. No locking myself into an expensive piece of gear just because the specs sounded good or because some idiot YouTuber said it was good. So do me a favor, check them out, but do use the link in the description to help support me and this channel. Now back to the loadout. On top of the Q-Core, I'm going to be using my Katabatic Gear Palisade 30 quilt. And because I'm going to be using this at or near the temperature rating of the quilt, I'm going to be taking this Katabatic Gear hood with me. This works with the quilt to keep your head warm in colder temperatures since quilts don't have hoods. And I can already hear the comments asking, why don't you just take a sleeping bag that's got a hood built in? And the short answer is this quilt with the hood weighs less than any of the sleeping bags that I currently own. And you can toss and turn inside a quilt without getting all twisted up. And the hood turns with you instead of you turning inside the hood. For food and water, I'm taking my Platypus Quick Draw Water Filter. This filter has drastically changed the way that I carry and filter water. Before this, I wasn't a fan of squeeze filters because they're so hard to use with water bladders. But the ease, design, and lightweight nature of this filter has got me carrying bottles instead of bladders. But I still really miss my bladder. I've got a whole video about it that a viewer saw, and he told me about something that he created that essentially made his water bottles into a water bladder. Now, this isn't it, but this is something that I found very similar to what he designed that gives you the best of both worlds. 
and because I'm expecting water to be available at least every night at camp, I'm planning to carry two one liter water bottles full of water that together weigh a total of 4.5 pounds worth of water. To cook, I'm taking my trusty MSR Pocket Rocket stove with one small canister of fuel and my Toke 650 milliliter titanium pot. For food, I'm planning on taking two dinners. I'm trying out these new Pinnacle Meals I'm super excited about because this is a small company that makes small batch freeze dried meals and I love to support small companies anytime that I can. I'm gonna take three lunches, a fresh sandwich for the first day and a bag of chips, summer sausage, cheese, and crackers for my second day, and tuna lunch kit for my third day. For breakfast, I'm going to be eating mostly breakfast bars, but I'm also going to take this granola from Peak Refuel that my wife convinced me to take on our last hike together, and it's one of the best tasting things that I've taken backpacking in a while. For snacks, I'm bringing some beef jerky, some Sour Patch Kids, and some trail mix. Now, one of the most important things that I take on any hike that I do is my Zolio Satellite Messenger. I love this thing, not only because it gives me peace of mind that if I get in trouble, someone's gonna come find me, but I can text back and forth with my wife to let her know that I'm safe and even let her see where I am. If you didn't know, I recently became a Zolio ambassador, but before I did, I had switched to Zolio after a decade of using spot devices, which is the reason why I became one of their ambassadors is because Zolio is that much better in my mind. This is the cheapest satellite communicator on the market at $200, and if you buy one, use the code MYLIFEOUTDOORS to receive a free activation. The other really important thing that I take on just about every hike that I do is my chair. That's right, this loadout is 23 pounds with food, fuel, water, and a chair. If you want to know why I take a seat every time that I go into the backcountry, watch the video up in the corner or this link in the description below. For extra clothing, I take my Melanzana fleece and hat, and for this trip, I'm taking my big, big Agnes shovel head jacket for just a little bit of extra warmth on cold nights, some gloves, an extra pair of underwear and socks, and a rain jacket and pants. And last but not least, a few miscellaneous items. A headlamp, first aid kit, repair tape, map, GPS, knife, bandana, trowel, toilet paper, and some extra Ziploc bags. I'm also gonna take a 15,000 milliamp battery pack to help keep my cell phone charged. And I'm gonna take some of these pale blue earth batteries to make sure that my headlamp and my GPS don't run out of juice. These are really cool because not only are they rechargeable, in fact, you can charge them on the battery pack I just talked about, but they are actually lighter than alkaline batteries. And I think they may even be lighter than lithium batteries, which is pretty lightweight. Okay, so that's it for the loadout. If you're interested, I'll make sure to put a link to my lighter pack so that you can see all the weights and the breakdown of how this loadout came together. If you're interested in buying any of this gear, do me a favor and buy it through the links in the description. I'll earn a small commission at no additional cost to you, and you'll help support me and the videos that I'm putting out. Make sure that you like and are subscribed, and that you're following me on Instagram at MyLifeOutdoors. And as always, thanks for watching.